Yo guys, today we're back at the budget-ish range, kinda, and you know, as, as you may know, I love stuff like this because it makes keyboards more accessible to everyone. So today we check out the Mojo 68 from Melgeek, which packs quite a few sweet features. Inside the box we get a USB Type-C cable, although it's folded, which I've never been a fan of, a wire keycap puller, a wireless dongle because yes, wireless, and a few extra keycaps. And here's the board. Uh, not to be confused with their previous Mojo 65, this is basically a, a translucent plastic version and there's a bunch of cool colours to choose from which actually look pretty coherently well done. It's decently heavy for a plastic 65% coming in at just over 900 grams and we've been seeing more and more of these kinds of keyboards where we have mounting systems more akin to custom X as well as other premium features and yeah we can see these black gasket pieces around the board. Although unlike keyboards such as the NK65, Iki68, Aurora, uh, Ramakara, KBD67 Lite, Portico etc, this is not a DIY kit, rather it's a pre-built with everything ready to go. I do really like this clear colour plastic though, very reflective and shiny as opposed to many others which are textured. It just expresses the plastic in a different way with the ribbing and supports on the inside creating these hard aesthetic lines and I really really like how it shows the lighting. The lighting is purely from the LEDs for the keys, there's no underglow or side blasting LEDs and yeah light just finds a way to illuminate certain lines of the board and in my opinion is done really well. Um, like that side profile is awesome. Although on the bottom we have this huge silicone piece which basically covers the PCB so we can't see any of that stuff. And you'll also notice that if you shine the light on it in the right way you get this rainbow effect which from my quick googling has something to do with this. Doesn't really matter to me but it's there. Um, also the little rubber feet uh, are pretty cute. I did spend like two or three hours designing something on Illustrator for the bottom but then I walked to my printer and saw this, so yeah, sorry, nothing special this time. Back to the top, and damn these keycaps are nice. I have the monster version of the keyboard which comes with these MG profile keycaps. Uh, these are double shot, so the legend is another piece of plastic and the walls are about 1.4mm thick. And they're just super clean, alignment, uh, colours, everything else looks good. They didn't specify it but I'm I'm pretty sure they're made from ABS plastic and they have quite a shiny finish to them and they'll only get shinier which my spacebar is already experiencing. The MG profile looks to be based on the classic SA profile but slightly shorter and have a deeper scoop similar to the MT3 profile keycaps. These are the other profiles available and I, I straight up don't know what comes with what, it's a bit confusing but yeah, that's them. And I can't speak for the other profiles and obviously we don't get a full key set, but these are easily some of the nicer included sets, so surely you got to portion a bunch of that price to these. So there's that, and then there's this. My daily driver is a wireless mech, so I love wireless keyboards just because it suits my needs on my desk. Um, it's compatible with Mac and iOS in addition to Windows and Android and can hold up to four devices at a time. You can of course use it in wide mode if you wish, which will also charge the keyboard. Then there's a wireless connection via USB 2.4G with the dongle if you don't have Bluetooth, and then Bluetooth 5.1 which I used. I'm the absolute worst when testing battery life because I can never keep track, but uh, it, it does have a 4000mAh battery which is pretty standard for wireless mechs, so yeah, it, it should last a decent while. Sorry guys. As for wireless performance, I had absolutely no issues with regular use. I found it perfectly fine when playing Insurgency Sandstorm, although I'm not mad, sweaty or competitive, so perhaps you may find a difference and the, the quickest connection may be important to you. Personally, I think wireless capabilities is awesome because you don't need to use it, you can plug it in, but it offers a nice bit of flexibility. Alrighty, let's see how it types. The switches I have in here are the TTC Speed Silvers, although they do offer a range of Gateron Pro switches by default, I believe. 
The Speed Silvers have a longer pole, meaning shorter actuation distance, and a two-stage spring changing the return, so uh, probably marketed towards gamers. So keep that in mind as well as the MG keycaps. Um, and I'll, I'll try a few different configs too. Okay, so in its stock form, with this particular configuration, it definitely has a hard bottom out, quite sharp um, and quite harsh. There's not much flex to be seen with the board, so not a whole lot of relief. It is very clean though, no hollowness or ping quite dense, because it is a dense board, as we'll see when we take it apart. But again, the switches and keycaps play a big part in this. The mods in particular are very sharp, but Pretty good in regards to the rattle, only my left shift had a bit of tick, but everything else is pretty damn good, uh, which is fortunate because these are plate mount stabs. Then I thought I'd try cherry profile keycaps, and you can definitely hear how much of a difference different profiles make. Then I chucked in some banana splits, lubed and filmed, as they should sound nice, and I was a bit confused at first as to why they sounded so mushy and dampened, and yep, my bad, my unit had north facing switches for some reason, so the caps were clashing with the switches, but on the actual final boards they'll be south facing, so yeah, don't worry, you'll be all good to use whatever keycaps you want. So then I used some OEM keycaps, and I'd say this is more representative of how lube switches and more normal keycaps would sound like. And yeah, it's pretty solid, still quite a muted sound and feel, but it's a nice pleasant bottom out, not really uh, thocky or too clacky, but, but muted because it's packed with foam and silicone. Um, also, I didn't record it, but banana splits with the MG keycaps was awesome. Alrighty, let's open up the keyboard, except that it doesn't have any external screws, so very much the pre-built approach with plastic clips. And they're pretty tough to release as well, so it definitely wasn't intended to be taken apart. Attached is the battery, which sits in the silicone piece. Um, there's no protection on the underside of the PCB for the battery, although we have hot swap sockets stopping the pins from protruding onto it. And uh, these are Gatoron hot swap sockets, by the way. The plate is made from 1.5mm aluminium, although it's bent on all sides, which would add to its stiffness. And we can see that there's uh, poron foam in between the plate and PCB. And this is actually what makes contact with the bottom plastic shell. So looking at the bottom piece, we have that big 
silicone dampener, nicely made. Then we have these rubber cap things on the four outer posts which do not interact with the plate or PCB uh, but with the top plastic piece instead. What the poron foam that's between the PCB and plate rests on is that, that outer wall which has a few raised bits so there's no gaskets on the underside in a traditional sense but it uses the foam layer as that dampening. If we look at the top shell then we see the friction fitter gaskets which are a squishy rubbery material at about 6mm thick so it's, it's an interesting implementation of the idea of gasket mount. The top gaskets have a range of, of movement to them but since they're on the top side they won't impact too much with the bottom mount. Instead it's the middle foam layer that kind of does it um, but there's not a whole lot of compression in that. And they do try to implement a kind of tab design with the raised bits in the wall but yeah, it's still pretty much along the whole perimeter so the pressure is more evenly applied and we lose like that potential flexibility so we end up with a dampened but still kind of stiff experience. And that's the Mojo 68 from Melgeek. Uh, this is definitely a case of retail mechs having features trickle down from the custom mech world which is awesome to see. But that's what makes it a pricey pre-built with a retail price of 249 USD, which is definitely right up there. Although at the moment it's on Kickstarter starting at 149 USD, which was gone straight away, so it's available at 169 USD, which I think is a great price for everything that we get. I personally love how it looks. I like that clear plastic aesthetic and the lighting implementation was on point. The keycaps are amazing. Um, easily worth quite a bit. You have hot swap key switches, wireless capabilities which I love. The gasket mounting method isn't the best in my opinion and the fact that it's difficult to take apart isn't something that I love and uh, also no QMK or VIA compatibility so they have their own software. But at this current price it's a very solid buy in my opinion because you get all of that ready to go. For the normal price of 250 um, I think it's a bit more difficult to swallow because then you can build like a KBD67 Lite or a Portico or whatever for that much which may suit your needs better and gives a bit more flexibility and customizability and arguably sound and feel better. But you know, it's good to have options so let me know what you think. Bless.